Hello everyone. In today's video, I will be showing you how to design Wilkinson combiner splitter. Um, so before we get into designing it in a simulation software, um, I think it will be nice to just go over a little bit of theory about Wilkinson combiner um, or a splitter and figure out why do we have a, such a topology. So I think I'll draw um, the topology first and then start explaining it. So in Wilkinson divider uh, or combiner, we have something like this. I mean, if you look at that, and then we have a resistor here. So if you call this port one, then that's port two, and this is port three. Well, in this case, uh, port one is 50 ohms, uh, port two is also 50 ohms, and port three is also 50 ohms. And in the middle, we insert a 100 ohm resistor. And it's quite symmetrical. Um, if you apply power at P1 or the port one, it will split in 3 dB. So half a power will appear at port two, half of it will appear on port three. And similarly, if you apply uh, power on port 2 and port 3, uh, it will combine together and it will appear on port 1. So that's, that's pretty good. Um, now, how this whole structure or this topology is working, um, that's something to talk about and it's very interesting. So if, we, if you open up, well, I can maybe just put something here which can give us a bit more idea about what are these lines. So these are two lambda by four transformers. And we all know what lambda by four transformer does. Uh, it transforms the impedance. So these are basically impedance transformers. Um, so two lines between port one and port two, port one and port three, they are two impedance transformers. So how do they transform impedance and why do we need them actually? So the answer lies in somewhere here. So if you look at that, if we have three resistors like this, and if we say this is port one and we say this is port two and we say this is port three, then what's gonna happen at this point? Or if you're looking from this point here, what's going to happen? What are we going to see here? So if these are, for instance, if these are 250 ohm resistors, these are 50 ohm resistors, and we're looking in from here, I mean, that impedance is going to be 25 ohms because they are parallel. So that's, that's, that's something that we don't want because this resistor, which is 50 ohm, he wants to see a 50 ohm point here it to be mashed and transfer power to it or work properly so well that's a problem and this is a problem that Wilkinson combiner tried to solve so how did it do that well how about if you make these two resistors this one and this one 100 ohms so this is becomes 100 ohms well okay sorry just from here so this becomes 100 ohm and this becomes 100 ohm well if they are 100 ohm then obviously this point will be 50 ohms well that's very good it's good in dc but how do we do it in ac because uh, the it's i mean our rf is an ac ac signal uh, so how do we improve or apply the same theory into an ac circuit so keep that into mind and we will Let's have a look at a slight theory about quarter wavelength transformers. Um, there's a there's a simple formula um, if you a quarter wavelength transformers. Um, if I if I want this quarter wave line to match Z in, and I call it Z out, and I call impedance of this as Z line or ZL, then for me to match, and this the length is lambda by four, by the way. 
So for me to match Z in to Z out, the formula is that we take a geometric mean. So we take a geometric mean of Z in and Z out. And whatever the answer is, let's call it X for now, X ohms, obviously. If we have an X ohms line, which is lambda by four, it will transform Z into Z out and Z out to Z in. So that's that's how it is. You know? And uh, this, this is quite available and you can read that in David Pozar's book or any other book that, that, that's out there. So this is very good. So if we get rid of this from here for now and apply that similar manner, So we have this, and we have this, and we want to bring it to here so it can match to 100. So what we want to see, we want to see 100 ohms here. We want to see 100 ohms here, so that is parallel. And it has to match to 50 ohms here, 50 ohms here, and it's a lambda by four, and lambda by four. So if we if we start doing that, so if you bring that to 50 ohms here times 100 ohms, so we're trying to find out what is the impedance of the line, then that's sorry about writing here. So 50 times 100, or we can say, well, we can say that that it's 50 times 50 times 2, which is 50 times 2 is 100. So what does that mean? Well, that means that two can stay in and 50 can come out. Okay, and that's Z of L. And if Z, I mean, if we say the overall um, impedance or of the system is Z naught, for instance, and Z naught is equals to 50 ohms, then we can say that Z of line is equals to Z naught times under root 2 and that's the formula for this line which is z naught dot under root 2 so if you have a 50 ohm system and you want to match it to another 50 ohm here well the overall 50 ohm 50 ohm then the impedance of this line will be z naught under root 2 so that's that's basically formula for this to calculate the impedance of these two lines. Just rubbing this. Now it's it's also important that okay well we, we are mashed at this point. That's 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 fine. That's very fine. Um, but we also want to have some sort of isolation between the ports because if you look at it signal apply to port 2 well somehow that signal obviously part of that is going to at this point part of that signal is going to go that way and part will start moving that way as well so port 3 is not going to be 100 percent isolated from port two, port 2 so how do we do that well for that 100 ohm resistor came into being so that's that's what wilkinson thought well he said if we put that 100 ohm resistor in that we will get some level of isolation. So how do we get that isolation? It's very, well, it's a simple thing, but it's also a bit tricky. If we have, if you look at this, it, it comes down to about, if you, if you look at it, it's, it's more to do with even mode or odd mode analysis um, with a resistor being in here. So if we have even more signal, and for those who are not familiar with even and odd mode, um, the even mode signals are the ones that are in phase. So if we're exciting two ports, with even mode signals, which is in-phase signals, 
then what's going to happen? Well, this ZL, or well, we can call it just maybe ZR for now. We can call it ZR. So the ZR is going to be an open circuit. Well, why is that going to be an open circuit? So the idea is that if you have two signals which are in phase and equal in amplitude, then there's no voltage potential or there's no there's no voltage difference between the two nodes and there's no current going to flow between. So ZR is open. So that point is an open circuit. So that that's fair. That's fair enough. That's good. That's a good thing. So you have a straight signal flows here, straight signal flows here, and it goes to the 50R resistor or 50 ohm. However, what happens when one of them is antiphase or out of phase? So this is this is this is where it's out of phase uh, or odd mode analysis. So that's what we call odd mode analysis. For odd mode, what's going to happen is that in the middle, almost in the middle of that resistor, we'll have a virtual ground. So the two signals, the current will flow this way and it will flow that way because obviously there's some level of, if you look at that, there's high, this is low. When you get there, there's a voltage difference and the current will start flowing. And in the middle, that's where we will have a virtual ground. Now the beauty of um, even odd mode analysis is that, which means our problem is halved now. So if that's if that's where the ground is, then it means we can almost split this circuit into two halves, and the both sides, I mean upper side and bottom side, will almost kind of will behave similarly. So we can just perform analysis on one side. So I'll just rub this off and please keep that in mind that what we are trying to do here right now. So the top circuit is going to be some in something like this. And I can call this that's a virtual ground and that's my lambda lambda by four and However, this Z is uh, going to be Z of R by two. That's half of the resistance. Now, what's going to happen is that if you if you remember, um, well, Smith chart. I'll just I'll just draw a rough Smith chart. So, on Smith chart, this side we are infinite and this is zero so there's infinite impedance there's zero impedance or open circuit and short circuit and lambda by four can move us from one end to another so if we are at short we will be open if you're open we'll be short so if you think about it then if that's the short here because that's a virtual ground so obviously it's a short if this is short then that's open that is infinite resistance. So we can almost ignore that part because that's an open circuit looking from the virtual ground. Yeah. So I'm just going to come back here and say uh, this part is the only part which is left. Now, if this is 50 ohm resistor or 50 ohm impedance, whatever you call it, then Z of ZR, ZR over two, to fifty, and that's how it's matched. Well, that's good. So now, what does that mean? Well, it means if I every everything put together again, if I put that back, and now I know that ZR. I know that ZR divided by two is equals to 50. Then Z of R 
is equals to 2 times 50 is equals to 100 ohms and that means that if I put everything back together sorry for my poor drawing but I'm just trying to do as best as I can do um, okay so that means now this resistor is 100 R or 100 ohms as we calculated from there and lambda by four lines lambda by four lines their impedance is two under a two dot z dot and that's how all of that system is mashed at all three ports well we can call this p1 p2 and p3 so the even odd analysis plus the lambda by four theory if you put all those three tools together you can go through wilkinson compiler splitter basic mathematics and you can find out how that 100 ohm is there why that 100 ohm is there and why lambda by four is there and why under two dot z naught is uh, the impedance of those lines so that's that's basically the basic theory behind it and that's how this whole thing works hope you enjoyed this video uh, i will show you how to simulate this circuit uh, using microbe office in my next video uh, please subscribe to the channel and click the notification bell so you don't miss out on new content um, that's all for now and stay connected